every day, we have choices. The choice to get up every morning, to drive to work, to be friendly. The harder choices are when you choose to act, choose to speak up, choose to help, to run into the fire. But all these choices are rooted in something or someone. Who or what informs the choices you make? Your education? Experience? The desire to make a living? The choices we make matter. The most difficult choice we could ever make is the one that brings us the most freedom. Choosing Christ over self. Followers of self listen to the world around them. Followers of self are too busy, too slow, and too distracted to respond. They continually need to unplug and find time for themselves. Followers of Jesus are filled by his teachings. Followers of Jesus act swiftly because they know the difference between needs and wants. Followers of Jesus put others before self and Christ above all. They choose to pick up their cross and follow him daily. So the question is, who are you following? Good morning and welcome to the online service of Christ Almighty Baptist Church and thank you for joining us this morning. Uh, our virtual Sunday school kicked off last week and continuing now every Sunday at 9.30 a.m. Please email Sister Riza at sundayschoolcabc at gmail.com for those of you who want your children to enjoy this ministry so you can be included in the mailing list every week for our virtual Sunday school. Our discipleship has been ongoing every Saturday at 4 p.m. Check out our website so you can see the details there and review the rest of the detailed announcements uh, that's played before our service starts. Let's turn our Bibles to Psalm 8, verse 1, for our call to worship. O Lord, how excellent is your name in all the earth. We have set your glory above the heavens. Let us pray together. Father, we worship you, Lord, this morning. Thank you for loving us and saving us in the Lord Jesus Christ. Thank you, Lord, that uh, we could still continue to worship you. And thank you for the joy that can never be taken away from us, that no matter what our situation that you are with us and we will never be abandoned, O oh God, by you in the Lord Jesus Christ. Father, we pray, forgive us our sins, Lord, and let our hearts be ready to worship you this morning. And we pray that as we offer to you our praise, our minds and our hearts and our souls in worship, may you be pleased, Father, in all that we do. And we pray, bless every part of this service today as we honor our graduates, as your word is read, as we sing hymns and a song, O oh God, to you, and as your word is preached, Father. 
ready our hearts, Lord God, for you and you alone. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. Let's sing to the Lord together with the CABC praise team. CABC praise team for leading us in worshiping the Lord this morning. Reading now from 2 Corinthians 9 verses 10 to 11. Now may he who supplies seed to the sower and bread for food supply and multiply the seed you have sown and increase the fruits of your righteousness. While you are enriched in everything for all liberality, which causes thanksgiving through us to God. 
once again, we give God the glory for His faithful provisions for us. And we are grateful for those of you who are uh, continually worshiping the Lord through your giving, thanking God for your love and generosity. And we pray that the Lord will continue to provide for those of you who are in need. Again, uh, there are three ways to give here in CABC through Canada Helps on our website, uh, through e-transfer, and through drop-off. Uh, please contact us by email or by phone so that you will know the details of how you can continue to worship the Lord through giving. And uh, we would be glad to help you in that regard. Let's pray. Thank you, Lord, for you are indeed our loving Father, provider and the giver of all good gifts. Your faithfulness, O Lord, never fails. Thank you for good health and strength and your protection continually, Father, upon us. Bless those who are still able to work. For those who have been back to work, Father, we thank you, Lord, for your faithfulness. And for those, Lord, who are still waiting for that day, Father, let them know your patience and your strength as they await, Father, even their own return to work. We entrust them all to your keeping. Thank you for your provisions, Father, for those who have lost their jobs and even those who are struggling financially through this pandemic that we are experiencing. And we rest in you, Lord, our faithful shepherd, with whom we shall never lack anything. Thank you for generous hearts who continue to support your work here at CABC and beyond. Bless them, O Lord. Bless your people. Meet their every need. And continue to grant us overflowing hearts, even in these difficult days. Grant us giving, generous and loving hearts, like yours, O Lord, in Jesus' name. Amen. Before I give the time to Pastor Elburn for the scripture reading, we would just like to honor our graduates for this year. And we rejoice with them and their families for this momentous achievement in their lives. I know they're at different levels, but we rejoice together with you. So the following are our graduates for this year. From senior kindergarten, uh, we have Jordan Mackenzie Brianne Facoon graduating from senior kindergarten. Graduating from grade five, a gifted program, we have Seth So. And the following are our graduates from grade six, Shikaina So. Zuki Marikit Guatilara, or Ia as we know her, uh, valedictorian, grade six as well. And the following are our graduates from grade eight, Jaden Fakun, Sharalyn Guevara, Desiree Guevara, Hope Henry, Timothy Santos, and Andrea Domingo with an English Literacy Award. Uh, she graduated from grade eight. The following are our graduates from grade 12. Lex Balmeo, Charity, Charity De Los Santos, Luke John or LJ Facun, Julius Palalon, Sara Dominic Cien, Brandon Bulliosos, who graduated with honors from senior high school. The following are our uh, graduates from their postgraduate studies or post college studies. We have Earl Cabaluna, graduating with a Master of Teaching from the University of Toronto. We have Grace Garcia, graduating with a Master's of Professional Education in Applied Behavior Analysis from Western University. And we have Ethel Reyes, graduating as a Medical Office Administrator from CJ College and Healthcare. The following are our graduates from their undergraduate studies. We have Julia Lewis, 
who graduated from the University of Toronto with an Honours Bachelor of Science. We have Melanie Bautista, who graduated with a Bachelor of Science in Sacred Music from Canada Christian College. And we have Michael Alconcel, who graduated with a Bachelor of Commerce from York University with honors specializing in accounting. And then we have John Reyes, who graduated with a Bachelor of Science in Exercise Science, cum laude, from the William Patterson University in New Jersey. J.R. Kiambao, we're going to be including him in prayer as we'll be praying for these graduates. He graduated last year, but he will be starting in Carleton University this fall. Uh, let's join our hearts together in prayer as we lift up these graduates uh, to the Lord as they enter a new stage in their lives. Loving Father, we give you praise and thanks for our graduates this year, for giving them grace, Father, to reach this milestone in their lives. Thank you for their hard work and the loving support of their parents and their family, Father. Lord, we pray that they will enjoy this moment in their lives. And even as they look forward to entering the new phase of studies or of their lives after the summer or even during the summer, we pray that as they enjoy this time with family and loved ones, that you will prepare them as well as they enter the next stage of their journey in life. Give them your direction and guidance. Let them grow in knowledge and true wisdom as they seek to know you more through your word. Prepare them, O Lord, for the challenges ahead and even perhaps new responsibilities that will be facing them. Lord, we pray for your blessing upon even uh, those who are uh, preparing uh, for life after graduating with their undergrad studies. Lord, whether they're continuing their studies or looking for employment, Father, just be the one to open doors of opportunities, O oh God, for them. We thank you for those as well who finished their postgraduate studies or post-college studies. Father, just show them once again that you are Jehovah Jireh. Be the one to open doors, O oh God, for them. Be the one to guide them, Father, as they apply for jobs, as they uh, seek for employment. Lord, direct them. Let them remember your words, which you have said that if we acknowledge you in all our ways, you will direct our paths. Father, we pray, we entrust to you all our graduates, Father, even now. We pray, Father, that uh, they will remember that all of these, O oh Lord, come from you. And we give you the glory, and we pray that they themselves will be careful to give you the glory and to trust you, Lord God, each step of the way. Father, we rejoice with them at their, and their families. Their joy is our joy, Father, and we are grateful for what you have done. Lord, we entrust them to you now. Bless them as only you can do. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. For our scripture reading this morning, I want you to turn your Bibles to the book of Proverbs, chapter 2, 1 to 22. Uh, we will take the time to read the whole chapter. It's not really very long. My son, if you receive my words and treasure my commands within you so that you incline your ear to wisdom and apply your heart to understanding, yes, if you cry out for discernment and lift up your voice for understanding, if you seek her as silver and search for her as for hidden treasures, then you will understand the fear of the Lord and find the knowledge of God. For the Lord gives wisdom. From his mouth come knowledge and understanding. 
He stores up sound wisdom for the upright. He is a shield to those who walk uprightly. He guards the paths of justice and preserves the way of his saints. Then you will understand righteousness and justice, equity, and every good path. When wisdom enters your heart and knowledge is pleasant to your soul, this Christian will preserve you. Understanding will keep you to deliver you from the way of evil, from the man who speaks perverse things, from those who leave the paths of uprightness to walk in the ways of darkness, who rejoice in doing evil and delight in the perversity of the wicked, whose ways are crooked and who are devious in their paths, to deliver you from the immoral woman, from the seductress, who flatters with her words, who forsakes the companion of her youth and forgets the covenant of her God. For her house leads down to death and her paths to the dead. None who go to her return, nor they, they regain the paths of life. So you may walk in the way of goodness and keep to the paths of righteousness. For the upright will dwell in the land and the blameless will remain in it. But the wicked will be cut off from the earth, and the unfaithful will be uprooted from it. This is the word of God. For our uh, prayer ministry this week, may I just ask you to take down the names of the following, so you will not forget them. Our missionaries are Chris, and Sarah Middleton, who are engaged in church planting in the province of Quebec. The officer we will remember to pray for is Ariel Pokis. He is one of our trustees. The members and adherents are the following, Ali and Lizal Layakan, and their children, Alaika, and Lian and Are. Then we will pray for Ed and Marietta Aladzo and their two children, Edmond and Christine. We will also pray for Cora Lee. And we will pray for Kiong and Robina Leong Takwan and their son, Liam. And also, please pray for Joss and Liray Limas and their son, Gabriel. And then finally, we will remember Elmer and Elaine Lopez, and their two children, CJ and Cassie. And our small group of the week is the Ilongo Bible Study Group. Uh, they meet every other Friday, and usually at the home of Vic and Lelaine uh, Manioso. Please remember this, uh, folks, in prayer. Let's do that right now. Let's pray together. Our Father, we thank you for the opportunity to come together, although not physically, but we thank you, Lord, for the freedom and the privilege of doing this. Once more, we are thankful for technology that enables us, Lord, to, to do so Sunday after Sunday. Thank you, Father, that not only are we ministering to our church people, but we are given the opportunity to minister also, Lord, to friends, to loved ones who are not part of Christ Almighty Baptist Church. Some are living here in Canada. There are folks who live in the States. We know there are brethren who listen to us in the Philippines and in other parts of the world, Lord. And we thank you that your word has been used by you to minister even to your people. And you've used this, Lord, to not only comfort and encourage and challenge and even rebuke, but also you've used your word, Lord, even to lead folks to the saving knowledge of Jesus Christ and indeed to enable them to grow in the relationship with him. And Father, we thank you that today we are able to celebrate a milestone in the lives of a number 
of our brethren, those who have finished school from one level to another. We thank you, Lord, for leading them and helping them. I pray that you continue to prosper them, especially those who have graduated, Lord, from university and college. And as they look forward, Lord, to being employed, to pursuing a career, I pray that you lead them in the right way. Father, we thank you too for your provision for them. And we pray that as those who are moving on to the next level of school, that they'll be ready, Lord, but for what lies ahead. Father, we commit to you now, our people, we are praying for this week. We thank you, Lord, for Chris and Sarah Middleton. We thank you, Father, for calling this couple to a ministry of church planting in Quebec. Lord, may you enable them to really learn to speak the language and pray that you will use them as they reach out, Lord, to the community where they live. Take care of them. Provide for them. And may you also use their two boys who will support them even in this endeavor. We thank you, Father, for Brother Ariel Pukis. Thank you for his commitment to serving you as a trustee. May he be faithful even to that role. Give him joy. We thank you, Father, for Ali and Lizelle Leyekan. We rejoice, Lord, in your faithfulness to them. You have proved yourself faithful in providing, in keeping, in watching over them. I thank you, Lord, for protecting them even in their jobs. We thank you to Lord for sustaining them as they have brought up their children well. Thank you for Alaika, for Anne, and for Leanne, and for Ari. Pray that, Lord, this young people too will be encouraged by their parents to serve you as consistently as they can with your help and your enabling grace. Lord, meet their needs spiritually, materially, emotionally. May there be joy in, their, in serving you. Father, we thank you for bringing to our church Ed and Marietta Lazo. Pray for this couple, Lord. Bless Ed in his work. And may you be with the children for Edmund and for Christine. Lord, they pray that they will be able to match the commitment of their parents. Lord, meet every need. Take care of Marietta, Lord, wherever she is now. Equip her too for her responsibility. Pray that there will be joy at home, peace and harmony all the time. Thank you for Cora. Thank you for the work you've given her at Life Lab. May you protect her, Lord, even as she commutes every day until, Lord, she retires from the work. Thank you for helping her through the years. Use her as an encouragement at work. Be a testimony for Jesus there. And use her to lose an encouragement to her son that through her life and witness, he will come to know Christ as his Savior. Father, we thank you for Kiong and Robina, Leong Takwan, and their son, Liam. Lord, thank you too for leading even, Lord, this family to us. Thank you for using them here. Thank you even, Lord, for the leadership. Even they provide to the home builders group. I pray that as they uh, meet, I pray that there will be others, Lord, who will be encouraged to join them. And continue, Lord, to provide for the needs of the family. And pray that you will bless Rubina in her job, Lord. Look up to her there. Give her joy. Now as uh, Kiong is uh, not teaching because it's now uh, summer, I pray that he will just make himself useful to even at home. I pray for Liam. May he continue to rejoice in what you've done in his life to be a blessing father even to his parents. And Lord, we want to remember even the uh, parents, Lord, of Rubina. Pray for Sukha and Jaga who are now in Mauritius. Lord, if you be pleased for them to come back to Toronto, then Lord, please make it happen in due time. We pray, God, that you will meet their needs there. Thank you for Josh and Liray Limas. Lord, continue to take care of this couple. Bless Josh in his work. Lord, I pray too for Liray as she undergoes dialysis, Lord. You know that what she goes through every other day, Lord, you are aware. May you just give her that peace. You give her that strength to cope. May there be no physical issues afterwards. Pray for Gabriel, Lord. Pray for this young man as he supports his parents. And whatever his plans, uh, may they be in accordance to your will. May there be joy and peace at home, Father. And if you be pleased for uh, Lee Ray, Lord, to indeed receive a new kidney, pray that that uh, 
donor will soon come, Lord. Pray that there will be, indeed, Lord, that patience to wait until that day. May they be found faithful. We thank you, Lord, for Elmer and Elaine Lopez. Thank you to Father for this couple and their two children, or CJ and Cassie. Lord, may you use them too in their respective jobs. May they honor you, Lord, in their lives at home as well as at work. May there be peace. May there be, indeed, Lord, harmony all the time. Use them as testimonies to their neighbors. Father, we pray that they'll be found faithful too. Thank you for the support they give, even to the Bible study group to which they are a part of. Father, we pray for the Ilongo Bible study group. Thank you for, indeed, the willingness of the Magnosos to welcome the group in their home when the pandemic was still not on. But I pray that as they meet virtually every other Friday, that these are going to be moments of truly learning and growing in their faith and in the knowledge of our Lord Jesus Christ. May you be with all the members that they will be consistent, Lord, in participating. Father, we remember those who are not well. May you touch them. Lord, especially we want to think of Sister Betty. I pray that you'll visit her right now. You know her desire, Father. If it be your will, she will be able to go home and even maybe for the last time minister to her family. But Lord, you are still in control. You still have the power and the ability to heal without the benefit of medicine. Visit her, Lord, right now. Give her comfort. Give her peace. We think, to Lord, of Carla. We think, Lord, even of uh, uh, Mami Espe. And continue, Lord, to have mercy upon Honey and all the rest, Lord, who are going through dialysis as well, that you'd equip them and protect them. Pray, Lord, for Ariel, for the nieces of Ethel in the Philippines. Pray, Lord, for Chandra and Rose who are awaiting, Lord, even the day of surgery. May they be able, Lord, to, uh, indeed, Lord, await that day with, uh, with confidence that everything will go all right. Father, we pray to for those who are looking for work. Lord, you know, some have lost theirs because of the pandemic. May they not be worried. I pray that you lead them to the right one soon. For those who are still traveling, we pray that you will protect them wherever they are coming from, Lord, and bring them safely home. Father, we pray that you bless even our plans to meet physically, maybe in August, and pray that uh, based on the guidelines of our government, we may be able, Lord, to fulfill this. And we'll be excited, Lord, on that, uh, for that meaning, Lord, and that we will really be thankful that you are going to work mightily even in our own local church. Thank you for meeting our needs as we continue to support our missionaries. We pray that we'll continue to support the ministry of CABC. And may we be generous. May we be, indeed, Lord, givers from the heart. I pray that our giving will be prospered by you even more. Lord, we continue to pray for our country, our province, our city, even as we navigate, Lord, even through this pandemic. Lord, one day, we will come to the end of this and say thank you for being there with us and for us. Lord, I pray that you please be with our Bible study groups that will be meeting today. May you be with those who lead, those who facilitate. May their moments of study, Lord, really be meaningful and significant. And now, Lord, I pray that you please honor your word that will be preached. May you equip your messenger. Hide him behind your cross. May it will be Jesus who will be seen and heard. For this is our prayer. In Jesus' name, amen. Well, I'm thankful for the opportunity to uh, be giving the message today from God's Word. Uh, this is uh, our baccalaureate Sunday. We have decided to uh, honor our brethren who have finished school this year in 2020. And uh, you have seen the list. And we thank God for each one of them and for what God has done through them and for them. And uh, uh, although we are sad that their schools uh, could not actually acknowledge their graduation uh, fiscally, but uh, we as a church can encourage them through this uh, particular service. We are proud of you, graduates, and we are proud of you, parents, who made the effort to make sure that your children can go to school and finish what they have begun. Now, when we intend to go to school, 
all of us who have done that and all of us who plan to do that, we hope to finish what we begin, even if it would take years to do so. Is that not the goal? Of course. And you know, it is interesting to take note that the Bible speaks of being in the school of life where there is no way we can graduate at all this side of heaven. All of us, whether we are believers or non-believers, you know, God allows us to be enrolled in this school. And the pursuit in this school is not to gain enough knowledge or wisdom to end up in a job or a career or endeavor that is commensurate that is to the training that one goes through. The end of this pursuit is godly wisdom. It is not human. It is not worldly. It is not sensual. James calls this wisdom that is from above, which is above and is pure, peaceable, gentle, willing to yield, full of mercy and good fruits, without partiality and without hypocrisy. That's in James chapter 4, verse 13. And when you pursue this particular goal, the end result is being like Jesus. That's actually what godly wisdom leads you to. Being like Jesus as God wants us as believers. No one can ever say that when you pursue this kind of goal, that I have it, that I have graduated. Even the Apostle Paul says in Philippians 3.12, I have not yet attained. That great man of God could honestly say, I have not come to that point. It is a never-ending quest, therefore, or pursuit as we live in this world. However, it is ever noble and exciting, never chaotic. It is never in a way that will be destructive or that will be, uh, in a say, futile. Now, those of you who are students of scriptures maybe are aware that Proverbs, mostly authored by Solomon, admittedly, the wisest man who ever lived, is a wisdom book that challenges the reader to, by all means, get wisdom. That's what we're talking about. And the word proverb comes from a Hebrew word, which means to rule. And so when you take the plural word proverbs, they speak of words and sayings that are supposed to rule and govern life. So when you read the book of Proverbs, you're actually looking at words and statements and sayings that are meant to enable you to live life, you know, to the fullest, a life that will honor and glorify God. So it is not simply a collection of bits of human wisdom, but of rules that come from God himself. The book of Proverbs, therefore, embodies philosophy of heaven for the benefit of people living on earth. It will take godly wisdom to succeed in living lives that obey God's rules and honor Him. And the message that I want to share with you this morning is entitled, The Pursuit of Godly Wisdom. And this is going to be taken from the passage that I read a while ago. And uh, you, when you look at this passage, actually it's some kind you know, of a conversation between a father and a son. And as we eavesdrop, you know, we realize that in the conversation, the father is encouraging his son. He's not commanding him. He's not coercing him. He's not twisting the arm of the son. But that he is encouraging him to pursue the wisdom that is from above. And what you will notice is that what they call this the if-then form of teaching. You know, the if is the action that is to be done, and the then is the consequence of the action that is to be done. Now, you know, we oftentimes, we parents use this kind of approach, you know, in teaching our children. For example, you tell your son, if you clean your room today, I'll give you a surprise, you know. So there's the if, and then there's the then. If you wash the dishes tonight, I will give you an extra dessert. The problem is, 
if, for example, I myself, you know, was told that many times by mom, if you clean, if you wash the dishes tonight, Elburn, I'll give you an extra dessert. But if I know what the dessert is, I would say, sorry, I'll pass. I don't like the dessert anyway. So the idea is this, that, you know, the approach will only work if we are able to convince our child that the result is worth having. This is what Proverbs chapter 2 is talking about. So the principle, in effect, is this. The only things worth pursuing are those things worth having. Let me repeat that. The only things worth pursuing are those things worth having. And so looking into this passage, I want us to take note of two main things that we want to consider. First of all, I want you to take note of the way of pursuing godly wisdom. You'll find that in verses 1 to 4. The four verses give the four if statements. Notice that there are no imperatives here. There are no commands that are given at all. And each of the statements is used to passionately call the son to pursue the way of wisdom. Also, each of these statements clearly defines the way of pursuing the wisdom that he wants his son to gain. Now, I want you to take note again of the subjective if. That word underlines the element of choice in the process of acquiring wisdom. It is not something that is forced upon the son, but something that he can make a choice for his own benefit. You know, remember God created people. He created you and me, and me with brains, with hearts, you know, with wills. We are not puppets. And so when, when, when God says to us, pursue this, he doesn't actually twist our arm to make sure that we obey. There is no sort of Damocles over our head. You know, that, that uh, indeed will give you that kind of looming danger if we don't obey. No. Uh, I, I realized that I was, uh, when I was a young dad, you know, I would, there, are, there were times, you know, when I would force the medicine uh, into the mouth of, of my son, you know. He needs it because he's sick. But, you know, because, you know, children don't like medicine. So what do I do? I would actually put my, you know, my hand, you know, on his, on his face and then try to make sure that the mouth is open and then push that, uh, that medicine into his mouth. That is what we say, forcing the issue. That is what we say, you are forcing the issue by twisting the arm or by forcing the mouth to be open. God does not do that. He says, if. Now, I want you to notice that there are four conditions of pursuing godly wisdom. First of all, the Bible says, pursue wisdom humbly. Verse 1, my son, if you receive my words, and treasure my commands within you. Now, the pursuit of godly wisdom is fueled by a humble heart that understands that one needs something he doesn't have. That's why the father says, you know, you receive my words. You don't have it. I want you to go after that. And to seek wisdom means that one is receptive to instruction and then keeps it as a treasure that is precious. You don't get it through one ear and let it pass the other ear. No, you take it in. And then you walk in the way of wisdom. And when you do that, you mean to daily live in the humble reality that without God, we are nothing. I think you'll agree with me if I say that a proud man will not learn anything. Because he would say, I know that already. I remember when I was still a... Uh, teacher in Bible school, there was one time, you know, when a, uh, a leader of a church came to us and complained that the Bible school student that we sent to them was a freshman. That uh, he said, he is a young guy, you know, there is still milk in his mouth, <laughs> which means that this guy does not know anything. And so the chairman of our practical work committee said, give him time, you know, listen to him. You know, he may be young, but listen, there is enough wisdom in that man, in that boy, that will enable you to learn. And thank God that leader went back and said, okay, you're right. And you know, if we are so proud, 
in thinking that I have already enough knowledge, I'm not going to listen, then you will not learn anything. And this is what Babu says. If we're going to pursue godly wisdom, let's pursue it humbly. Let's know that in us there is nothing, that without God, we cannot do anything. But number two, not only should we pursue wisdom humbly, let's pursue wisdom submissively. Verse two, it says, so that you incline your ear to wisdom and apply your heart to understanding. Now, the references to ear and heart are talking of making an active and determined effort to become acquainted with wisdom and to do what it demands. To incline your ear, therefore, means to externally hear. You know what it means? It means to listen, to intentionally draw your ear next to the speaker. You know, if somebody's speaking to you and you want to really know what he's like, you know what you do? You try to do this. You want to make sure that you catch what he's talking about. That is what it means here. To hear with the ears externally. But then it says, apply your heart, which means that we internally obey. Not only listen with the ear, but bring it down to the heart and then obey. Our response begins with a heart that says, yes, Lord. No wonder why, you know, when Jesus Christ was asked, what is the greatest commandment? What did he say? Love the Lord your God with all your heart. That's first. The heart should respond in obedience. And that is what we're going to be. To be submissive to the word of God in order to actually pursue the wisdom of God is to yield my emotions, my thoughts, my volition, my actions to Him. Without this, there can be no way we can gain godly wisdom. So we should pursue wisdom humbly. We should pursue wisdom submissively. Number three, let's pursue wisdom resolutely. Verse three, it says, Yes, if you cry out for discernment and lift up your voice for understanding. You know, you, you know what the picture here? Here's the guy who is shouting. Says, I want it. I demand that it be mine. I, I, and the idea is this, that you're intent and you are serious in getting it. And, and you don't care what others think of what you're trying to do. They'll tell you, keep quiet. No, I don't want to be, kept, to be quiet. I want that in my life. You know, the idea is that I must have it by all means. There is no intention of getting by without doing my best. I remember when I was in high school, uh, my classmate was uh, actually a poor boy from the farm. His father was a farmer. And you know, but he was so serious in his pursuit of education. You know what that guy would do? He would stay in a, in a house, you know, and he would cook his own meal. He would wash his own clothes. He would do his own errands. But you know what? He would study hard. And he, would, he, was, he was really intent on finishing on the top of the class. And that's exactly what happened. After four years in high school, that classmate of mine became our valedictorian. He was top of more than 500 students in that high school. He was a friend. And you know, I was proud of him. And you know what? He was able to get into a big university because he was given a full scholarship for four years. And today, he's a retired engineer. But you know, the point is this. He was resolute. He was not going to give up. He was not going to allow his being poor to stop him. And this is what God wants us to do. If we are going to pursue godly wisdom, we'll have to do it with the resolution. We're not going to be stopping at anything. And then number four, let's pursue wisdom persistently. Look at verse four. And if you seek her as silver and search for her as for hidden treasures. Again, the idea here is that when you pursue godly wisdom, you are like mining for silver. That is the metaphor here. And when you mine for silver, it is something that is hard. It is backbreaking. There is going to be no way you're going to stop until you find what you're looking for. Or like taking, you know, that, that time to make sure that the treasure that I'm looking for will be mine. This is what the Bible is trying to say. If we are pursuing godly wisdom, let's do it persistently. You know, you remember that parable that Jesus Christ talked about in Matthew 13, 44? That a man found, you know, a field with hidden treasure. What did he do? 
He went home, sold everything he had so that he can buy this field. And this is what God is trying to tell her. You know, you're going to mine even this wisdom like silver is being mined. And you're looking for something that is hidden treasure. You've got to make sure you dig deep and you don't stop anywhere. Folks, I want you to understand this. That the pursuit of godly wisdom should be the greatest pursuit of our lives. Nothing more should be as important as that. So first, we have the way of pursuing godly wisdom, which means what are the conditions. But number two, I want you to notice the worth of pursuing godly wisdom, which means what are the conditions, or what are the consequences, I'm sorry. What are the, the results when we do that? Now, from verses 5 to 22, we are made aware that the pursuit of wisdom is costly and difficult. But is it worth it? Yes. That's what verses 5 or verses 5 to 22 actually tell you. The rewards of seeking wisdom make the pursuit worth every sacrifice. Maybe we'll not be able to quantify them materially, but they surely are precious and worth trusting. Now, what I want you to notice that the verses 5 to 22 are the then part of the conversion. You, want to, you remember what I said? If it's the if you do this, then this will be the consequence. So this is the then part of that conversation. I want you to notice three things. First of all, if you pursue godly wisdom the way you should, then this pursuit will lead you to knowing God. Verses 5 to 7. Then you will understand the fear of the Lord and find the knowledge of God. For the Lord gives wisdom. From his mouth come knowledge and understanding. He stores up sound wisdom for the upright. He is a shield to those who walk uprightly. This is what the Proverbs is talking about. We will gain insight into the things of God. We will gain insight into the intimacy with God. We will also gain entrance into or insight into reverence of God. That's what it means. And by the way, the word reverence here is actually taken from the word the fear of the Lord. And by the way, the word fear of the Lord is not slavish fear. Rather, it is the reverential awe that leads you and me to the worship of, trust in, and love for God, who is all-powerful, who is all-knowing, who is gracious and merciful. In other words, it is constructive fear. It is not destructive fear. And by the way, Proverbs 1.9 says that the fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom. Listen, it is not the end of wisdom. It is the beginning. So when I learn to fear the Lord, you know, when I actually end up with this kind, you know, of attitude, then I will learn to put my trust in this Lord. Then I will learn to follow this Lord. Then I will learn to love this Lord. That is what it means. And we will realize that God is the source of all wisdom. You know, I love it just here. The Lord gives wisdom. From His mouth come knowledge and understanding. Listen, my friend, wisdom does not come from Buddha. Although Buddha may have wonderful sayings and statements. Wisdom does not come and knowledge does not come from Muhammad. Knowledge and wisdom do not come from professors. They're not coming from scientists. They're not coming from philosophers. They're not even coming from mediums or oracles. Wisdom and knowledge come from God alone. And when you pursue godly wisdom, then you will be made to enjoy this, knowing God better. And you will understand that it is God who stores up all kinds of treasure for those who know Him. You know, the, the idea is this, that when you follow this, this, this godly wisdom, and then you will know God, you will not be disappointed with Him. And I'm sure you know that those of you who have really come to know God better and more, you'll realize that this God that I serve never disappoints us. He'll never fail us. And this is what even Proverbs is talking about. So the, the pursuit of godly wisdom, number one, leads to knowing God. Number two, the pursuit of godly wisdom leads to knowing the way of God. Not just the person of God, but the way of God. Verses 8 to 10. What does it say? He guards the paths of justice and preserves the way of his saints. Then you will understand righteousness and justice, equity and every good path. 
when wisdom enters your heart and knowledge is pleasant to your soul, this Christian will preserve you. Understanding will keep you. Notice the word here that is used three times. There's paths and then there's the way, right? And you'll notice that this is what will happen to you. Knowing the way of God means that we will know the right way to go. If I know the way of God, I'm not going to go on an errant way. I'll be following the right way because God will never lead you on the wrong way. God will never lead you in the, in the way that will lead you to death. You know, he says to you, this is the way, walk you in it. And when you follow that kind of pathway, how is it described? It is right, it is just, it is fair, it is good. You remember the story of David? It's interesting. When he was maybe 17 years old, we are told that he, he killed Goliath. And he became the sensation, not only of the army, but even of the whole nation of Israel. And they would cry and say, Saul has killed this thousand. David killed this 10,000. And so he became the object of Saul's envy and hatred. And there were times, you know, when Saul would find a way to kill this, this young man. And so he would have to run away. But you know what is interesting? Many, many times, if you read 1 Samuel 18, you'll find this. David behaved himself wisely. In all his ways. You know, he learned to follow the way of God, and so he behaved wisely. You know, he could have killed Saul twice. God has given him that opportunity, but he didn't. You know why? Because he behaved wisely. He was following the right path. He was following the right way. Because that is where the pursuit of godly wisdom leads. You will know the way of God. And then finally, the pursuit of godly wisdom leads to enjoying God's deliverance and preservation from evil. You know, there are two specific persons that are actually made mention here. If I pursue godly wisdom, then that will lead me to being kept by God from these two individuals. Number one, he describes the wicked man. Look at verse 11 to 15. This Christian will preserve you. Understanding will keep you. To deliver you from the way of evil. From the man who speaks perverse things. From those who leave the paths of uprightness. To walk in the ways of darkness. Who rejoice in doing evil. And delight in the perversity of the wicked. Whose ways are crooked. And who are devious in their past. Now listen to this language. You know there are men in this world today. Whose ways are always like that. Wicked men who only enjoy wickedness. And there are three things here that Proverbs uh, made sure we know what this wicked man is doing. This wicked man is wicked because his way is evil. Number two, his words are perverse. Number three, his walk is in darkness. And when I pursue godly wisdom, God will keep me from this kind of man. I will not be following, you know, the way that he is actually leading me into. I will not be listening to the words that he uses. These are perverse words, you know. And then I'm not going to be walking in his path because it is dark. There's no light there. And so when I pursue godly wisdom, God will make sure I'll be delivered from this kind of man. But number two, you'll notice that only are we going to be delivered from this wicked man the one who pursues godly wisdom will be delivered from the immoral woman. And look at verse 16. It says, to deliver you from the immoral woman, from the seductress who flatters with her words, who forsakes the companion of her youth and forgets the covenant of her God. For her house leads down to death and her paths to the dead. None who go to her return, nor do they regain the paths of light. So you may walk in the way of goodness and keep to the path of righteousness. You know how the Bible describes this woman? She's a seductress. <laughs> she's a flatterer. See, first of all, she's a flattering woman. And by the way, flattery means insincere praise. And when woman, a woman flatters you, it is not because you really look good. There is an ulterior motive to that. 
And I think the best example in the scriptures is Delilah, you know. And, and so because of that flattery, Samson fell. And oh God, save us from that kind of woman. And then not only is she flattering, she's forgetful. What did she forget? She forget the home she was raised in. She forgets, you know, the, the, the vow she's made to her husband. She forgets the covenant of her God too. Maybe she was raised in a, in a home of a believer. But somehow because, of her, because she didn't follow the ways of wisdom, this is what happened to her. And God says, if you and I are going to pursue godly wisdom, God will preserve us and deliver us from this kind of person. But not only that, not only is this woman flattering and forgetful, the Bible says it's fatal. You know why? Because her house leads to death. Anyone who follows this woman will never get back alive. I want you to understand that. I'm talking to you young men. I'm talking to you old men. I'm talking to myself. I'm talking to you also women. Because there are women, you know, perhaps who would listen to people like this. Watch out. God doesn't want us to actually follow this kind of people. But you know, the only way we can be kept from that is when we pursue godly wisdom. And then the Bible says, then you may walk in the way of goodness and righteousness and then dwell in the land and enjoy its goodness and blessing and wonderful guidance and leadership of God himself. So there are two things here that I want you to consider. Pursuit of godly wisdom. We are challenged how to do it, you know, to make sure that we pursue it with the humility, pursue it submissively, pursue it resolutely, and then pursue it, you know, persistently. And when you do that, the Bible says, we will be led to knowing God, we will be led to knowing the ways of God, and then we will be led to enjoying God's deliverance from the wicked man and from the immoral woman. But as I close this message, you know, I want you to realize that when you talk about godly wisdom, you are not talking about just a person or a concept for that matter. You're talking about a person. For you see, in the Bible, wisdom is actually Jesus Christ himself. Not only does he represent wisdom, the Bible says Jesus is wisdom himself. Listen to what Paul says, 1 Corinthians 1.30. But of him, that's God, you are in Christ Jesus, who became for us wisdom from God. That's number one. Who became for you, who became for me, wisdom from God. Godly wisdom, if you please. And righteousness and sanctification and redemption. So what does it mean then? to pursue Jesus Christ. What does it mean to pursue this godly wisdom who is Christ himself? First of all, it means to acknowledge him as your savior. If you're listening to me this morning and you realize that you have not committed your life to Christ yet as your savior, maybe you understand that, that you are a sinful man, that you cannot save yourself, but somehow you're still at a loss what to do. Listen, Christ came to this world, went to the cross, died for you, Take your place, but thank God he arose from the dead, and today he ever lives. And when you call upon him, when you run to him by faith, the Bible says he will save you. He will not turn you aside. He will not turn you away. He will welcome you and become a part you know, of his family. But as many as receive him, to them give you the power to become what? Children of God. That's what it means to follow Jesus. It means to accept Jesus. And then, not only should we acknowledge him as our savior if you're a believer then love him that's our challenge now I, I know some of you are thinking can i really love jesus well that's what he wants us to do love him with all our hearts with all our soul with all our mind with all our strength that's the challenge and then follow him and then serve him that's what he demands and i pray that even now despite the pandemic you're still doing that serve him at home Serve him in your community. Serve him in your workplace. And maybe when school opens again, I want to challenge you students, serve Jesus in that community. You see, by doing that, you are telling the world, I am in the pursuit of godly wisdom. Listen, this is the pursuit that requires time and energy 
and great sacrifice, but the reward is great and therefore worth all that we expend to do so. Let us pray. Father, thank you for your word. Oh, that you will give us grace to pursue godly wisdom as we're encouraged by Proverbs chapter 2. And may you help us, Lord, to do so with humility, with submission, with resolution, as well as with persistence, so that we will come to know you more, be intimate, and knowing the fear of God in our hearts. And then we will know the way in which we should go. And above all, we'll learn to be delivered, Lord, from the wicked men and from the immoral woman, that we will lead lives that honor you. Oh God, I pray that this would mean knowing Jesus, knowing him first and foremost as our Savior, and knowing him as our Lord, and serving him, and following him, and loving him, until that day when you will welcome us to your home where we will get our diploma and receive your words, well done, good and faithful servant. This is our prayer with thanksgiving in Jesus' name. Amen. We praise God for that wonderful message. And may we remember indeed that what is worth pursuing is what is worth having. And may we be mindful of the ifs as well as the, then, the thens of our pursuits in life. Uh, let us pray. Father, thank you for that wonderful message. And we are grateful that Jesus is indeed for us wisdom from you, as well as righteousness and sanctification and redemption. Lord God, may we go through life pursuing you, Lord, for who is and what is more worthy of having than you. Lord, let your word penetrate deep to our hearts and let it bear fruit in our lives as we end our service today. In Jesus' name, amen. Let's sing our final hymn as we end our service this morning. for joining us in our worship service today. Know that you are loved. Go in the joy and strength of the Lord. Have a blessed week. God bless you.